السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة المتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحابه أجمعنا ما بعد so الحمد لله ونعم on chapter 18 where Imam Haddad speaks about zakat and also he includes charity into the topic Zakat, as many know, is one of the pillars of Islam. We know the five pillars, Salah, Zakat, which is in reference to uh, a form of charity, in a manner of speaking, given once a year on one's, on one's saving. And it only equates to 2.5%. Along with that, we have the fasting of Ramadan, we have the Hajj, and of course, First being the belief uh, in Allah and the testimony of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of believe, uh, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Imam Haddad, he speaks about zakah and charity and he says, and we'll just start off with what he says, when you have money on which zakat is payable, be aware of when it falls due. Define its quantity, separate it from the rest, give it willingly and intend it to be solely for the sake of Allah. If you do this, it will attract barakah, blessings. The good things in your possession will multiply and your wealth will become well guarded against all hazards. See, with zakah, many people look at zakah in the wrong way. They look at, look at zakah as a charity. See, it's yes, it is a form of charity in a manner of speaking, but more importantly, it is the right of other people. It is something that we need to do. It is an act of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need to do on a yearly basis. Now, of course, there are rulings to zakah. You know, if does one saving meet the threshold that one is required upon which if they do meet it and they pay zakah, so there are fiqh rulings. Uh, we're not going to cover those rulings in these sessions, but it's definitely something that a person must learn because it's from amongst those actions which a person must do so a person must learn the rules of zakah and if uh, they are liable to pay zakah then how much do they pay working out it's something that is mandatory and needs to be done many people let go of zakah just not really giving it its due attention uh, and remember it's a pillar of Islam as a matter of fact nearly every, you'll find zakah mentioned many a times throughout the Quran with salah so just as important as salah is we know the importance of salah zakah is just as important zakah is just as important and it's the right of the, that wealth is the right of other people that wealth that we are meant to give zakat on that zakat money or whatever uh, if someone is giving gold or silver it belongs to other people it doesn't belong to us it's the right of others so we need to do we need to dispense of it uh, as soon as possible at its appropriate time so make sure you take due care of zakat you must separate zakat from your wealth and then distribute it do not be like certain worldly people who do not keep it separately and who give it away piecemeal to deserving people as they come along until the amount to be spent is all paid. Do not eat of your crops when they amount to a nisab, and so nisab is the threshold on which uh, one meets the amount payable. So if you have a certain amount of wealth, uh, nisab is that sort of wealth where once you met that amount, then you have to now pay zakat. So it says, do not eat of your crops when they amount to a nisab, and when their quality has become apparent until you know how much of its dry weight will be due. If you want to eat from certain specific trees, then you should calculate only that which is will be due from them. Uh, and this is another issue. Um, for many people at that time, they were farming people. So in terms of farming, there's a set of calculations as to how to calculate zakat on your crops and so forth. Um, of course, we don't need to get into that in this part of the world. Many of us have probably never visited a farm as well, let alone have any kind of understanding of the farm or have crops. 
Number point is that make sure you are considerate, careful of the zakat that's payable. Like you're conscious of that wealth. Know that those who devise ruses to escape giving zakat, for instance, by giving gifts, those who knowingly, knowingly give it to people who do not deserve it, and those who distribute it according to their whims, as for instance by giving it to someone whom they know will be useful to them, soon be useful to them. None of these men shall leave the world until God has punished them through their wealth, and he brings a verse, and the torment of the hereafter is greater if they but knew. Now, what he's saying is that, look, some people, they are so stingy with their wealth that they will look for loopholes in the Islamic law, the Sharia, in giving zakat. Maybe either they will look for loopholes so that they can avoid giving zakat, or they will try to do something where they will give zakat to people who maybe later on in the future they have a plan set up that this person will come into use to me or that money will somehow come back into uh, to me through some kind of investment or something of the sort but they'll make some kind of plan that's the point don't be that person happily give zakat know that it is because of this person i'm able to give my zakat because i need to give my zakat I need to give it somewhere and thank allah that there's this person here that i can give my zakat to you know, is we need to give us a God. So make sure don't think see don't think that you are doing someone else a favour. Rather think in this way that they are doing you a favour because if they weren't there and you couldn't you did not find this person or you did not find this charity then you would not have been able to give your zakat even though it's still an it's still an obligation upon you. So do not think you're doing someone a favour when giving zakat. That's a little arrogant because that wealth that came in the first place is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The least you, we can do is give the due amount set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, many people really, zakat does need a lot of attention just because in today's time many people forego the giving of zakat or do not even consider it. Many people are not even conscious of giving zakat um, until many years later sometimes. So there's many years that have been missed out. So do be considerate of giving zakat and know that it's an obligation upon you. It's a very serious matter. And we're going to come on to a certain point just to emphasize its seriousness. And there are many hadith in regards to a person who does not give zakat. There's many verses in regards to the giving of zakat. So it's emphasized just as much as any other deed, or if not more than most deeds, is there nearly every time you hear it with salah. So Imam Haddad says, and the, if this is the state of those who do not give, it strictly according to the law, what must it be in the case of those who do not give it at all? And he brings a verse, those are they who purchase error at the price of guidance, so their commerce does not prosper, neither are they guided. He goes on to say, the withholder of zakat, is as evil as the one who leaves the ritual prayer. Abu Bakr radiallahu an fought them and called them apostates. So what had happened was after, so the first thing he makes very clear that zakat is just as bad as missing salah. Missing salah is not an option. It's an obligation, it's mandatory upon a person. You are sinful for missing the salah. You are sinful for not giving the zakat. So a person must give it. Be Consider to be conscious of Allah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving zakat is an obligation. Then he bring, mentions the incident about Abu Bakr radiallahu that he considered people who do not give zakat as uh, apostates, that they're no longer Muslims. What had happened was after the demise and the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, of course became the first Khalifa. During his time, during his era, Many people withheld their zakat, giving, offering different excuses. So Abu Bakr he actually fought against them, physically fought, he sent out armies against people, against groups of people, and treated them as apostates because of the fact that they withheld and they um, no longer gave their zakat. They no longer believe that they have to give the zakat. So, 
it's a very serious matter. Uh, it's, uh, Imam Haddad is saying, look, Abu Bakr, the, you know, the closest person to the Prophet wasallam, he's not acting out of ego. That wealth was never going to come to him in terms of it's not coming into his pocket. It's for the people. And Abu Bakr, he, treat, he dealt with people who do not pay with zakat by fighting them. So it, it should emphasize the or highlight in some or many ways the importance of zakat and the significance it holds in Islam. You must give zakat al-fitr. So this is the the charity. Some people call it sadaqat al-fitr. Some call it fitrana uh, that we give in the month of Ramadan or towards the end of Ramadan. So you must you must give zakat al-fitr at the end of Ramadan if you are required to for yourself and on behalf of all those whom you provide. Be liberal with charity, especially to needy relatives and people of virtue. So now he's going to come on to his generic charity. Charity is better and brings more reward when given in this way. Give of that which you like best and which is dear to you, so that you may attain to virtue. God the Exalted has said, you will not attain to virtue until you spend out of that which you love. This is important. Many of us, when we give charity, we, and I don't mean just the wealth, you know, when we give anything in a charitable cause, we sometimes don't give the best. Uh, of course now, in this world, most times it just comes down to wealth. We don't give gold, silver, or jewelry necessarily. We normally just give some money, some wealth. Know that this charity is something which we should do. See, zakat we normally look at as charity. Don't think of zakat as charity, that's an obligation, and that's not even charity, that's the right of other people. Charity is what we call sadaqah. Okay, that way we can give it any time throughout the year. So sometimes people think that I've given plenty of charity, why do I need to give zakat? No, zakat is very different. That, does, that wealth doesn't belong to you, it belongs to someone else. Okay, that's some, that's, that has a very different role and a very different purpose. Or sometimes people think that I've given zakat anyway, why do I need to give sadaqah? Sadaqah is charity, zakat is charity. No, it's two separate things in many ways. Okay, treat it as two separate things. Sadaqah is charity, which we should do all the time. So we should of course give zakat and of course give charity. And he brings a verse about giving the best to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or in the path of Allah, giving out of that which we love. And there's many a hadith in regards to uh, under this verse you find in the tafsir stories upon stories about how different sahaba they considered what was the best of their possessions sometimes for some of them it was a certain garden that they owned a certain piece of, piece of land for some it was a certain well they owned and they gave it to charity now all messenger of Allah we give this to the people in charity um, distribute it as you feel, feel some people gave uh, other pieces of land that some people gave a certain amount of wealth. What do we give? What are we going to give in charity? Um, and I'll give you a good example. Sometimes people come to the masjid giving books that we want to give. Uh, we want to donate books to the masjid. But when those books do arrive, many times they're tattered away. You know, these books have withered away to time. They're ripped. They they're not the best, and that's not how, that's not how we should approach charity. When it comes to giving charity, we should give the best of the wealth that we have, best of the possessions that we own, and really be willing to give charity because that charity will bring upon in our own life many blessings. And you find about the famous hadith about Umar radiallahu that once the Prophet sallallahu he Long story short, he uh, made a call for charity. And Umar, he said to himself that this is the day where I thought and I believed that I was going to surpass everyone, and especially Abu Bakr in giving charity. So he went home and he gave half, half his wealth to the Prophet in charity uh, for him to distribute accordingly. And then at that time, basically Abu Bakr, when he was asked, what have you given? He, I think I found correctly, Umar radiallahu anh, gave either a half or a third or something of the sort. But it's a very significant amount. When Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, was asked, what are you giving? He mentioned, I've only left 
the Prophet ﷺ, you know, are, are homing, I've given everything. I've given everything. So these were the Sahaba. These were the Sahaba. Don't be that person who has to count the penny and the pound before giving, ch- giving charity. Of course, I'm not saying that give all your wealth and then because of that, your own family and the people who are your uh, dependents upon you, they now suffer. That's not correct either. But don't be on the other sp- end of the spectrum where we count and we be stingy. We don't count every single penny before giving charity. Give open-handedly to some extent. You know, this sounds contradictory, but by some extent, uh, to some extent, what I mean is that it does not violate the other rules in Islam where we are not able to fulfill our responsibility towards those who are dependent upon us. Okay, put others before yourself in even in times of need and you will become one of the successful. There's actually a hadith in this regards that we're not more specifically mentioning that if you help remove a calamity from someone in this world, a believer from in this world, then Allah will remove a calamity from you in this world and the hereafter. And you help someone in this world and Allah will help you in this world and the hereafter. So, you know, charity is just something that whoever goes around comes around. Allah will take care of you. You take care of someone, Allah will take care of you. And who is the best caretaker? Of course Allah. Allah is sufficient. So, be happy to give charity. Keep your charity secret, for secret charity extinguishes the Lord's wrath is 70 times better than public charity and is safe from ostentation that ruins deeds. Ostentation is when we show off in our deeds or call riya, doing it other than for the sake of Allah. Never neglect to give something away every day and even if a small amount. And do this early for hardships do not cross the protective barrier of charity. And there are hadith in regards to one that gives charity, it takes away the hardships and uh, extinguishes the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So try to make a habit of giving charity every single day Even if it is just uh, a few pennies But it's consistent Remember we spoke about consistency uh, Before Ahabbul A'mal ila Allahi adwamahu wa inqal And the most beloved action in sight of Allah is that which is continuously done Even if it be a small amount Never disappoint a beggar Who stands at your door Give him as little as a date or less for he is a gift from God to you. If you find nothing to give, then send him away graciously with kind words and a promise. When you give a needy person something, smile at him and be aware that it is you who are indebted to him. For he accepts a little from you, for which you receive a reward worth more than the whole world. It has been said, that a single morsel of food may bring a reward from God greater than the Mount Uhud. This is so key. Then when we do give charity, now many times in this part of the world we don't get to see the person. We have no uh, contact with the person that we are giving charity to. Uh, most times we give it through an agency or a proxy of being the charity uh, or another relative that will travel to another country or something of the sort. So. It is somewhat different, but if we get to have contact with the person that we're giving charity to Then make sure we conduct ourselves with the best of manners uh, In Surah Duha, Allah mentions In regards to the one who asks, do not repel, do not repel that person Qadada uh, says that this is in reference to a person who is a poor and they ask for wealth, they ask for charity, do not repel them, do not, um, do not be rude to them. Say kind words and be gentle to them. So we should show the best of mannerisms to the person that we are giving charity to, to the people that we are giving charity to. Why? Because they are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of them, we are able to give charity and because of that charity, Allah will shower us with His blessings. It's a very different way. Don't think, see, sometimes people think that I'm doing you a favor. See, that will lead to pride, and that pride will not get a person far at all. Rather, it's the other way around. They're doing us a favor. How many times have you seen that wealth is that thing that we want to accumulate and we do do our, our utmost to accumulate, but it's that very same thing 
that destroys families that greed for wealth destroys families it tears families apart even siblings it tears siblings apart it sometimes tears parents and children apart always fighting over money sometimes and this is why the barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the blessings from Allah is so vital wealth in itself is nothing it has no value unless Allah puts blessings inside it then it has value and one of the ways to attain that value one of the most important ways is to give charity the more you give the more blessings there will be and there are there's a, a wide range of a hadith in this regards and many a verses in this regards too many to mention do not let the fear of poverty prevent you from giving charity for it is the abandonment of charity which brings on poverty so it's not charity giving charity that will make you poor as the promise is that you give Allah will increase whenever you give in charity Allah will increase you in your wealth Okay, either through blessings or through the wealth itself, then the value and so forth will increase. And that is the promise, that is the promise of our Sharia, our Lord. Charity, on the contrary, attracts wealth. If the pursuer of the world gave much charity, it would return to him multiplied. Know that charity has immediate and long term benefits. It immediately increases provision, lengthens life, protects from an evil death gives bodily health and puts barakah blessings into wealth later on it will extinguish sins as water extinguishes fire shade the head of the of its giver on the day of rising protect him from punishment and many other things and he brings a verse only those who repent remember ultimately speaking if it helps us bring us closer to allah then that's all that we need if it helps us bring us close to Allah, that's all we need. And honestly speaking, one of the ways to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by being in the servitude of other people. Once we take care of the needs of other people, Allah will take care of our needs. And there's again many hadith in that regards that a person, and yet there's a famous hadith of the person who um, take he removes a calamity from a believer, then Allah will remove calamities from him in this world and hereafter one who covers the faults of a believer then Allah will cover his faults on the day of judgment so taking care of other people just goes around the circle and Allah will take care of us so never feel stingy never feel that no I can't give charity right now inshallah of course and everyone's situation is different some people cannot give much wealth some people cannot do much at least then those that we cannot give charity to we do we part in good ways we make dua for one another and we still be respectful and our mannerisms should be still of the best uh, towards such people uh, as an action point i would say that number one be considerate of your zakat and calculate the zakat be con conscious of when you're going to give that zakat and uh, make sure we do calculate it and learn the rules of zakat okay and number two uh, make a habit of giving charity and ultimate best would be try to give it every day or at least you yourself keep a routine of giving charity and you decide when you want to give that charity it might be on a weekly basis a daily basis uh, entirely or a monthly basis but it should be something which is continuous as the prophet mentioned that the most beloved action in sight of allah is that which is continuously given even if it be, even if it be a small amount and try to instill this habit of charity within uh, your children or your younger siblings that every day even if it's just a penny just putting just creating the habit of giving some wealth every single day and ultimately we should try to do it at the beginning of the day not that not at the end of the day start your day off with charity that you I, I would say have some cash at home see when we do it through uh, just bank transfers you don't ever actually see it you don't actually be conscious of it I guess and you know you've done it but you're not consciously doing it every day and it doesn't really it's not really embedded into your mind it's I would ideally say do that as well set up the bank transfers whatever you need to do but along with that maybe have some cash in the home and every day put the penny the pound whatever else it may be and physically do that so that is part of your routine is embedded into in, in your routine 
the moment you wake up that the morning we're going to start it off with charity inshallah you'll see that throughout the day there will be many blessings inshallah from the official say jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh